Hey guys, it's Austin here with Out Jeeping, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to replace an exhaust manifold on your Jeep Straight 6 4.0. So the Jeep 4.0, it's found in a lot of Jeep vehicles like this 99 Jeep Cherokee right here. It's also found in Wranglers and Grand Cherokees and I believe they stopped making the engines in 2006 um, when they switched over to the JK from the TJ. So in case you don't know, a Jeep 4.0 looks like this. We got an inline six motor and the exhaust manifold is actually going to be located right under the intake manifold over here. So all through the 80s and 90s on the Jeep 4.0, they came with a one-piece exhaust manifold and they are prone to cracking. A lot of people have, end up having to replace it. So we're going to be replacing it with a new stainless steel one. Um, nothing all polished up, but one that has flex pipe built into it so that way it can handle more vibrations and hopefully down the road it will be less prone to cracking. Um, on the later Jeep 4.0s, they basically have a two-piece exhaust manifold and then they have pre-cats. Um, that's going to be found in your 2000 and newer 4.0s. This is a 99, so this is the last year they used the uh, one-piece exhaust manifold. So as you guys heard in the intro shot, this Jeep does have a good exhaust leak. It's nothing too excessive, but you definitely notice that ticking from inside the vehicle as you're going down the road. Another piece I'm going to be replacing today is the front pipe. That basically goes from the header all the way down um, to the front of your catalytic converter. The exhaust hanger basically broke and now it's rubbing on the cross member and it's causing a lot of vibrations and it's really actually annoying. You can definitely hear it inside the cab when you're going over bumps or just revving at different RPM. So the quick overview on what we're going to be doing today, we're going to be basically disassembling everything on this side of the engine, kind of unbolting it all. We have to take off the intake manifold. I'm also going to take off this air box right here. That way we can get at the bolts for underneath the intake manifold because they are kind of hard to get and you might have to remove some of this stuff to be able to reach your arms in there, feel around and get at those bolts. But it's nothing too difficult. I've done this job a few times and it's just time consuming. So I'm going to show you guys all the steps on how to do it today. So let's just get started. All right, so I'm going to start off removing this air box. We basically have to take the cover off, take the filter out, and there's going to be three bolts in here holding it down to the fender. So I'm just going to take this breather line off. And I'm just going to swing it all the way to the passenger side of the car because we're not going to be working over there. That's what I'm going to be doing with a lot of these components is just kind of moving it over to the other side. We don't have to completely take it off, just where it is over here. And then they do have these plastic uh, clips. You can just take a screwdriver, pop it back like that, and then wiggle it off. Then they got these three clips holding down the top of the air box. I like to take a screwdriver. I did have a comment on YouTube of some guy being so cool that he could uh, do it with his fingers. So if you got big old potato fingers, by all means, go use that, but this works just fine. And then I'm just gonna set everything to the side over there. Air filter, which looks like I can use replacing actually. So in the air box, we got three 13 millimeter uh, nuts actually. There's studs that come up. Two of them actually broke off because they're so rusted and there's only actually one holding on. So I'm gonna use some penetrating oil and try and put it in there first so that way I don't break the last one and then we'll zip it out. All right, got that out. I'm just gonna leave all the hardware in here so I don't lose it and then remove our air filter box. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is actually remove more of this uh, vacuum lines. We got one going to the manifold right here. If you wiggle it, pop off, and then it goes all the way to the valve cover. And then I'm just going to twist it, push it all to the passenger side. Then we got a vacuum line for the brake booster. Pop that off as well. And then slide that over. Now I'm not going to remove the whole entire throttle body. I'm just going to take off the cables. So I'm going to pop these three out of here. Take three 10 millimeter bolts holding down this bracket and then just push it to the side. Do 
just like that. Right, this one actually takes two, but I think some of them actually have three of them on there. And then it is clipped in on top of the valve cover over here, so we're just gonna pop that out. That way we get enough slack to push this out of the way. Another thing I noticed that actually helps is to actually remove the throttle cable that goes to your uh, gas pedal. And that's gonna be the one closest to the firewall over here that has a different connector. And I'm just gonna pop it out of the bracket here, clip it off of the valve cover back here, and that way it should be um, over on this side because otherwise it's still kind of stuck over here when you're trying to lift up everything. It um, easily gets caught on stuff. So I'm just gonna take a screwdriver and unclip this. Here and then move it over to the driver's side and just kind of tuck it away around the brake booster for now. That way it doesn't snag on anything and it should be all good. Then move this over to the passenger side. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna worry about is the wiring harness. They got a wire harness uh, protector over here, this plastic thing, and it's on top of the three head bolts over here. It basically just kind of holds on to there and all your injectors are plugged in. We got a temperature sensor way up here and then we also have a line running down the side to your uh, upstream O2 sensor. So you might have to get under there to be able to unplug it and unplug everything else and that way we should be able to move everything over to the passenger side. And then for these injector wires they have a little red safety clip. You want to pop that up. Now a lot of times they do break so let's see what happens here. That one was all right. And with all those safety clips undone, all we gotta do is squeeze and they should pop off. Now if you are worried about which wire goes to each injector when you reinstall it, you could uh, label all these, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, but the way that these uh, wires are all kind of like molded, so it is, so it should be pretty simple kind of putting it back um, because they all have like different lengths and all kind of like stay in one position as you can see because the wire does get stiffer over time with all the vibrations of the engine. So what I'm noticing with these connectors back here is that the plastic got so brittle that it's not even unclipping so it's kind of destroying itself unfortunately but we can always zip tie this so it kind of connects back in here a little bit better. All right, so I went and got that O2 connector undone. I was able to do it from the top side. You just gotta lift up on the tab that's on the uh, O2 sensor side harness and then pull it apart and then it should be fine. Now you also have to uh, undo the wire harness that goes over here to the throttle body. Um, so we just got four connectors over here. So we got this one into the map sensor, throttle body position sensor, and IAC I believe. and it pops off like that. Now don't worry if you're afraid of mixing these up, they only plug into one sensor, so you should be good. Um, just keep an eye on how everything is run through here. You might have to take pictures if you forget, but basically we got the wire harness goes um, from this sheath over here, underneath the fuel rail, coming out, and then the two sensors over here, we got the wire harness that goes down and kind of clips onto the side of the intake manifold over here. So we're gonna have to pop this guy off a threaded rod. It just pops off of that. And then we can start pulling this wire harness through. On the back side of the intake manifold over here, we have a wire going down to the crank position sensor. So we just got a little plug right here. We're going to undo it. And actually, the crank position sensor side harness kind of bolts up to the intake manifold over here. So we'll have to take off this 10 millimeter nut. That way, it should be free of the intake. So I'm just going to pull that out. And now hopefully I should be able to get this top nut off because there is a second uh, bolt holding it into the intake. So hopefully that doesn't unscrew before this. There we go. Pull off that nut. Then I'm going to slide off this metal tab, hold on the crank position sensor harness, and then just put the nut back on the stud. That way I don't lose it. Okay, and then I'm just going to take the extra wire over here from the throttle body. 
And actually, I'm going to pull off this uh, sheathing first, and that way we can uh, have enough slack to push it underneath the fuel rail and get it out of the way. So I'm just going to kind of tilt this back a little bit and push up. Just like that. Now I'm going to push this harness underneath. And then when everything is free of the intake manifold, I'm just going to push it all over to the passenger side so it's out of the way. And I did forget to mention that we do have a couple more vacuum lines on the side of the intake. You're just going to want to pop those off. They're two different sizes, so you shouldn't be able to mix them up later. Those are off, and I'm just going to push them over here to the side. All right, so we got two more things we got to undo on the intake manifold to be able to... Uh, free it up so that way we can unbolt that. That's going to be the power steering and then our fuel rail. I'm going to start off with the power steering. It has three bolts going into the intake manifold and to be able to remove the power steering we have to remove the belts and to remove the belt we got to remove the tension on it. So to remove the tension on these ones since they're not automatic we got to crack the idler pulley down here free and usually you have to uh, remove the electric fan to get a ratchet in there but I got a ratchet wrench and I was able to fit it in there and crack it free so I'm going to undo that and then we over here on the other side we have a 15 millimeter bolt that's going to release the tension that way we should be able to get the belt off so i'm just going to crack this idler free and now i'm just going to loosen up this 15 millimeter bolt over here that way our belt should be loose um, I don't recommend using an impact for tightening, but for loosening it up, you should be all right. Use a little bit of a swivel on here, so that way I have a little bit more room. All right, and that should do it. So now I'm just going to pop off the belt, off the idler pulley first, and then... Pop it off the top of here, and you don't have to completely remove it, just get it off of the uh, power steering because that's all we're removing. All right, so I thought I would get away with not having to remove the electric fan, but actually I have to remove it to be able to get at the bolts um, holding into the intake manifold because you have to go through the pulley. Um, so to remove this, we basically have our overflow line that's kind of in the way. So you might have a hose clamp on here, I do. It's just going to be a uh, simple flathead and pop it all the way for now. Now from the factory, you do have two 8mm bolts that go into this uh, front cross member piece, but they've long since been replaced with a zip tie and 10mm bolt. So I'm just going to undo that quickly. And then lastly, we have our wire connection going to our electric fan. They do have a red plastic clip on there, so you're going to want to push that down and then squeeze and separate them. Once it's all free, you can lift up and take it out of here. Alright, so now we can actually unbolt the power steering pump. And on this pulley, they do have holes right here, so that way you can stick your uh, socket through. And then they should be able to get at them. And now this is a 13 millimeter, so we got three bolts all the way around. I'm going to hit this with some uh, WD-40 to help lube it up since it is going into aluminum and it is steel so they like to corrode Ooh, that don't feel good there we go that top one's pretty tight so i don't want to risk breaking that off so i'm going to go get some pv blaster to help penetrate that uh bolt So I'm going to let that soak for about five minutes. We'll get back at it. In the meantime, let's take off this fuel connection. So now over again on the side of the intake manifold, we have the fuel line that is bolted onto the side. So to free that up, we just got a 10 millimeter nut and we're going to loosen that up. So before we remove the fuel line, we need to relieve the pressure that's in the fuel system. Right here, we have a Schrader valve on the fuel rail. It has a plastic cap on it. So we're just going to unscrew that. And then to relieve the pressure, you can take a screwdriver and uh, push that little pin in. And I got a rag right here, so hopefully it should soak up any fuel that comes out. 
There wasn't that much in there, so that's good. And then I'll put our cap back on there so we don't lose it. Okay, so for this fuel connection right here, we do have a little safety clip we're going to have to pop off. You can simply take a screwdriver, kind of get under there. And then it should pop off like that. So this does have a fuel disconnect right here. So we're going to need a fuel disconnect tool. You can get them at any auto parts store. I just have these cheap plastic ones that actually really, you know, they don't work the greatest, but they do make some aluminum ones out there that definitely help a lot. But I'm going to be using this today um, to get this off. So it is a little bit rusty right now, so I'm just going to go and spray it with some PV Blaster. So with these fuel line disconnect tools, they got a little slit in the side so we can slide that over our connection over here. And then basically with this uh, disconnect tool, we want to push into the connector and that way the prongs should expand and then hopefully we should be able to pull apart the fuel line. All right, so getting this fuel line off um, with these cheap plastic uh, disconnectors is actually rather difficult like I was saying earlier. So with these plastic connectors, when you're kind of pushing it in there, um, they don't you know, keep their shape. They like to crimp down you know, towards the pipe and they need to stay uh, straight. That way they can pull the tabs on the outside. That way it's released. So what I did actually is just put some electrical tape around the fuel line to uh, make up for that thickness so that way it doesn't kind of shrink up and pushed it in there, kind of wiggled this around, and since this is all kind of rusty, it's a little bit more difficult, but I finally got it disconnected um, like so. And then you want to push the fuel line to the side. Um, since this is a hard line, you want to be careful that you don't bend it because you don't want any leaks. So I'm just going to leave it down there. Okay, so I'm going to continue uh, taking out this power steering pump. I was able to free that up um, when the PV blaster soaked all in. So I'm just going to finish removing these 13 millimeter bolts and then this should be disconnected. All right, so with all the bolts out, we should be able to take this, slide it off of its bracket, and since we're not disconnecting any of the hydraulic hoses, I'm just gonna set this down in the corner where the airbox used to be, and that should be fine. It should give us plenty of room. Okay, so now we're actually ready to start unbolting the intake manifold. Now this is gonna be probably the most pain in the butt part of the job since we got bolts that go underneath the intake manifold and they're kinda of hard to get to. So we'll have to use some swivels and extensions to get at it. But to start off with, since the exhaust and intake manifold kinda of share the same surface, they also share the bolts holding down onto it. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually remove the intake manifold and they uh, use pretty much all the same bolts except for the two outside ones on the way in the back and then way in the front. They're basically studs that go into the block and they have a nut. So we're going to save those two for last because we're going to leave the exhaust manifold on until we take off the intake. So on the top side we can see our bolts right here. They're going to be a 9 16 and we got five of them on the top that we can easily access and then we got four of them underneath and they're going to be in between the bolts that are on top. So if you're wondering and trying to feel around where they are, um, that's where they're going to be. So I'm not going to be able to really film um, underneath because it's kind of hard to get at. Yeah, I can't even see it when I'm doing it here. So, so it's mostly just feeling around and trying to get those bolts out. So I went and sprayed some PB Blaster on these threads because they were looking a little rusty. And I'm just going to go take them off. Okay, so the top five bolts are removed. Now I'm gonna move down to the bottom and get those four bolts out. Now on the front one over here, I do have a little more clearance, so I don't need to get a swivel, but I just have a bunch of extensions. I'm gonna slide it underneath the intake manifold, find the bolt, and then take it off. Over here in the back, since we got the brake booster and the uh, steering shaft kinda in the way, we're gonna have to use a swivel. I usually like to go ahead first and uh, feed in the extension of the socket and make sure it's on the bolt, and then I'll attach my ratchet and then take it off. Now as we're taking off this last one, as you can see, the intake manifold is starting to get loose. Um, if it becomes too difficult or to remove the last one, you can actually put one in on the top to help hold it in place as you're taking out the bottom. You gotta take out the one up here that's just holding it. All right, now we should be able to take the entire intake manifold and lift it out of place. Remember not to tip it because we do have fuel in the fuel line still. Okay, so with the intake manifold off, we can start working on removing this exhaust manifold. And the only thing holding it back onto the engine is just these two 916 nuts. 
there's one right on the front here and then there's one right on the back and then we also have two bolts that go to the flange for the front pipe which is way down here and I've actually tried to get some sort of a wrench or socket on there but since they're actually so rusted um, they're a little bit smaller and nothing's going to fit on there so um, since the new exhaust manifold actually comes with new bolts we can cut those off and it might be a little bit difficult to cut off on the bottom one um, so actually since I'm replacing the front pipe I have this advantage I'm just going to go underneath and cut off um, the, where it is on the first elbow and that way I should be able to remove this all in one piece. Okay, so with that cut, let's go and remove these last two bolts. And sometimes if the uh, nut is kind of uh, rusted on there, the whole entire stud actually might come out like it did on this. No big deal, we'll just have to put it back in and make sure not to mix it up with the rest of the bolts. The nut actually came off that one, but it fell down somewhere on the floor. All right, but now our exhaust manifolds all uh, off the engine. I'm just gonna lift it out of here. All right, so with the old manifold off, I went and uh, put the new front pipe in off camera. I had actually removed the entire exhaust in this vehicle just to be able to get the old pipe out of the, um, where the catalytic converter goes so I can slide it in there. But it's down there right now. Um, it's all loose and everything. So before we put the new one on, obviously we have to clean off the surfaces. So I'm gonna clean off this head over here, take off the old gasket and use some scotch brite and really clean it up. And since this Jeep has 303,000 miles, as you can see in the ports, there's a lot of sludge and uh, other crap that's all built up in there. So I'm gonna go and try and clean that out the best I can. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the intake manifold. And for the new exhaust manifold, you don't really have to do it. Just uh, wipe down any oil that would be on there from shipping and then it's ready to go. That's the old nasty gasket. All right, so I went and I got the engine surface all cleaned up along with the uh, intake manifold and the new exhaust uh, manifold. So the next thing we gotta do is actually put on the new gasket. This did come with a header. It also came with a donut flange um, that goes down to your front pipe, but I ended up having to reuse my old one because the new one was all messed up and wouldn't fit on there at all. So, so I'm going to put the gasket on. It's the same thing on both sides and you can uh, flip it over so it doesn't really matter which way you have it. And then they got these two little studs that come out on the side of the head and that's going to help keep this in place while we bolt up the rest of the uh, manifold. All right, so this is the manifold we're going with today. It has these flex pipe in here to uh, help uh, eliminate the uh, cracking issues that's on here. And I've always had good luck with these. They do come with new hardware for putting it to the down pipe and a new gasket, like I said earlier. So I'm just gonna line up the back stud on there and push it against the engine. And since the uh, bolt on the front side actually came out with the whole thing, I'm gonna go and thread this in place to hold the entire uh, manifold in place. So now I'm just going to snug up these two bolts on the end so that way the manifold is nice and close against the engine. And that way we can line up our front pipe and tighten that down also. Alright so I went and got those bolts onto the uh, downpipe flange over here. Um, I wasn't able to get the shot because my body was in the way of the camera most of the time. But I'm going to go and tighten these down now. They're going to be a 9 16 And we want to make sure when we tighten this down, we're going to keep going back and forth. So that way it evenly uh, compresses that seal and it should give a nice uh, sealed exhaust. Alright, so now we're ready to reinstall the intake manifold onto the engine. And when doing this, we got to be careful that we uh, make sure we get everything lined up. As you can see here on the intake manifold, we got two little holes, and those are going to go over these uh, little studs that come out of the side of the cylinder block. And when we put this on, we want to make sure that those go in it. Um, it's very easy to actually have it on there, and it looks like it's up against the engine, but it's actually propped up, and they're not in the hole. And if you tighten it up, you can crack your intake manifold, so that's not good. So you just want to make sure that gets on there. 
and um, we're going to thread all the bolts in and then we'll start tightening everything up. So I'm going to hold it up there right now and put a couple bolts in on the top to hold it in place. Alright, so I got the top five bolts in and my intake manifold is on the engine nice and flat. You'll know if it's off because it'll actually be riding up a little bit. It won't look level with the rest of the engine. So now comes the hard part. We got to fit the uh, four 916 bolts on the bottom. And you know, the best way to do that is just feeling around. You can't really see it at all unless you can stick your head way down here. So we're going to put those bolts in the hole and then snug everything up and then we'll come back and torque everything all down. Alright, so I went and got all the bolts in. On that last far one that's underneath, I actually had to go underneath the Jeep and if you got long arms like me, you can uh, reach up in there and actually throw it in place. So that's what I did. Now I did notice on this new exhaust header is that some of the uh, bolts from underneath you can't really get in there with a uh, socket even with a swivel because it's actually too close to one of the uh, header pipes so I'm going to have to use a wrench under there. So I'm just going to start tightening everything down now. I got a uh, little diagram right here. It shows all the torque sequence. Basically everything is getting 24 foot pounds except for these two outside ones that we put in first for installing the uh, header and those are just going to get 17 foot pounds. So we're just going to be going in a diagonal pattern from the middle and working ourselves out. I'll post a link where you can find the torque sequence um, so that way you guys can do it yourself. So I actually don't have a torque wrench that's uh, small enough to get in here to get at all the bolts so I'm just going to give it my best shot by doing it by hand. It's nothing crazy tight since it's only like 25 um, foot pounds. So you just want to do it in the right sequence so that way the gasket mates perfectly with no leaks. Okay, so now the intake and exhaust manifold is all bolted up to the engine and torqued down. We're ready to basically just put everything back together. And I'm just going to do it the reverse order that I took everything apart. So, so I'm going to start with the fuel line. I got a glove over this because it was getting a little fumey. Make sure that end is nice and clean so that way the O-ring seals nicely. And actually, I'm going to uh, install it down here first. It's basically taking off this 10 millimeter bolt putting the fuel line in, and then retightening it. And taking this, and all we gotta do is push in until it clicks. All right, so once you think you got it on there, just take a little uh, test pull, make sure it's on there. This one's on there, so I'm just gonna take this little safety clip and pop it across here. Now before I forget, I'm gonna get the crank position sensor and remount it up here in the fuel rail. So I'm gonna take off this nut that we left before, and get our plug. It has this little metal tab on here. So I'm gonna get the wire harness back in. So I'm just gonna pull it from the passenger side. Just kinda of lay it out where it needs to go. And remember that the wires that go over to the throttle body, they actually have to route underneath the fuel rail. So I'm gonna do that. Where this sheathing lines up with the head bolts, we're going to line it up there and push down. And then we can just start plugging everything in where it needs to go. And then we got this little uh, clip right here that goes onto the stud where our fuel line was. That just helps hold the harness in place. And then we got our two connectors up here. Then lastly, we have our upstream O2 sensor, and that's going to route underneath here. Now next, I'm just going to plug in all of our vacuum hoses to where it needs to go. We got the two on the side over here, and then we have two on the top. We'll take our throttle cable and route it back where it was. Then we have our two 10 millimeter bolts that uh, hold down this uh, throttle cable bracket. And then we just gotta pop our throttle cables back into place. And 
Then we got our power steering pump. It's going to line the holes back up and thread the bolts into place. Now we got our belt to put back into place. Most of it's still on all the pulleys, so all I got to do is just put it on the idler pulley and the power steering. Now I'm going to go and tighten up the tensioner. All right, so I got the electric fan in here. Um, we got the two prongs that poke down and clip into the bottom of the radiator mount. And over here, um, since this fan is a little bit broken, um, there's a broken corner, so I'm just going to use a zip tie here, and then I got a uh, different bolt that goes in here. Normally, you have two 8 millimeter bolts holding it in from the top. And then we got our electrical connection that should just plug right in. And if you don't have a broken red safety clip, you want to pop that back in as well. And then we got our overflow tube, and that just pops right in here to the radiator. All right, so now the last thing we gotta do is just put in the air box and then we should be pretty much done. All right, so now we got our air box. I went and washed this up because it was all dirty and everything, but I'm gonna throw this back in here, line it up with the studs that come up from the fender. And then I'm also actually gonna put a little bit of anti-seize on these um, because they do like to break and I only have one of them left, so I need that kind of to stay on there. And then take our nut and tighten it up. I just went out to the store and actually bought a new air filter because the old one was looking pretty dirty. So I'm just going to throw the air filter back in. And then we got our cover. We want to slide in on this side. They have little tabs. And then I clip in the metal tabs. And now lastly we have our intake hose. Fit it over the air box and then fit it over the throttle body. And then with these plastic clamps, all you gotta do is just tighten them up by hand and they click tightly into place. All right, so once everything's hooked up, we can go and try and start this. Um, remember, since we disconnected the fuel line, we're gonna have to prime the uh, fuel pump before we start it. So I'm gonna do that a few times until I hear the fuel pump bog down. Then I'm gonna come over here and check for any fuel leaks because you don't want to start it, obviously, if you have fuel leaking. And right now it's actually going to sound really loud because I don't have the muffler or catalytic converter hooked up. I still got to do that yet, but I want to make sure this is all squared away before I continue with that. And it looks like I forgot PVC bell. That just plugs into your box. Alright, looks like everything is good. I'll try to start it. Alright, so as you can see, it is going to smoke. That's just because of extra oil residue that's on the uh, exhaust header. So that's completely normal. It'll do that um, probably for the first five minutes. But I'm going to go get the rest of the exhaust hooked up and we'll see how quiet it is. Alright, so I got the rest of the exhaust hooked up. I have the front pipe over here and it's clamped into the old exhaust. I actually had to remove the entire exhaust in the vehicle to be able to get the old front pipe out of here. I just ended up having to cut a slit and slid it in and then just clamped it. And then I also added some other uh, exhaust hangers because the rest of them on the vehicle were all broken off and rusted. But everything's all up there. And I did have a problem with this walker pipe. It always seems like I have problems with the walker exhaust pipes and everything. This is the third time I've had an issue with them. And basically when I had this all installed, it was resting straight on the cross member. So I actually had to take a jack and uh, jack up the pipes to rebent the exhaust hanger so that way it's not on there. So now everything is nice and solid, and let's go start it up and see what it sounds like. I'll also mention that it does have a thrush muffler on here also, so it might be a little bit louder than stock. And in case you were wondering what my old exhaust manifold looked like, it does have a couple cracks in it. One of them is right here, as you can see, and then I do have another one right down in that joint. So it wasn't terribly loud, but it was making a little bit of a ticking noise once you gave it um, acceleration. All 
right guys, that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. I hope you guys liked watching me get this piece of junk out of here, but but now hopefully this should help preventing cracking in the future with that flex pipe. I've actually used uh, these eBay ones for a long time. I know my friend had it on his Jeep for like four years and he has no issues so far. As long as the rest of your exhaust is not wobbling around, you should be uh, putting more stress in the header for it to crack. But as always, I'll post a link in the description below on all the parts I used in this video so that way you guys can find it. Um, it really isn't a hard job to do, just time consuming, you know. I'll pick a weekend to do it just like how I did here today. So if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to the OutJeeping YouTube channel. It'll help keep these videos coming. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to post them below. And until next time, I'll see you guys in another how-to.